is Brian Martin, um, the Director of Customer Success here at Biz Equity. Um, so today what I'll show you is something we went through about two weeks ago in your office. It's a, uh, the Biz Equity Business Valuation Tool. What we'll do is we'll go over um, the valuation portion of it, which I know kind of everybody's going to be using a little bit differently. Um, but I'm going to take you through the most common use case, um, and then there are going to be some situations where it's used a little bit differently um, depending on your role. So we can cover that. Um, I know that hasn't all been worked out yet, but you know what we do know about it, we'll, uh, we'll let you know. Um, we'll then move on to our search for prospects feature, um, and then we'll finish up on our success center and some of the uh, marketing materials we've created to help our users be successful. Um, first things first, logging in, you would go to brinker.bizequity.com. Um, I already logged in here as Matt, um, but it's important that you log in at your specific white label. Going to bizequity.com will not work. Um, so it's brinker.bizequity.com. When you log in, this is the homepage, which would allow you to start a new valuation. But where I want to start is in our company's console page. So when you log in, your name will be up here up top. You click your name, company console. Um, the console is anything that you've run um, will appear in here. So any companies you valued in the past. Now we have Matt marked as a manager. So his list is going to be pretty long because he can see uh, all the companies that have been valued. Uh, actually, Matt is not marked as a manager. I need to do that. Second thing. Uh, um, I think everyone in the room, we will want marked as a manager as well. So that's, okay. that's easy enough. Good example. I'll take care of that after the uh, right after the call. Um, the reason I wanted to show you the console is where the smart link lives. So if there's anything that you, if you're not going to be marked as a manager, anytime that you want a business owner to run a company, and I'll, we'll go through that process in a minute, you need to use your smart link, and that's how we know where to place the company into your console. Now, if you're marked as a manager, you'll see a long list here um, of all the companies that have been run. So it's still smart to use a smart link just so it's tied specifically to your console. So over here on another browser, I have Matt's smart link, and this is so you should see they're not logged. We're not logged in, and this is exactly what the smart link is. And we'll go through uh, quickly. Go well, not quickly, but we'll kind of breeze through the seven-step process of valuing a business. So this would be there's sort of three use cases for the business valuation tool. First and most popular is an advisor in the field um, or somebody in the home office would actually collect financial data from a business owner and run this on their own. In that case, you wouldn't really need to use the smart link. You could just run it from being logged in. Uh, but you would need, uh, we request three years of tax returns. You can do it with at least one um, and the financial data to actually run it. The reason that's the most popular way to roll it out is, you know, you as the user understand the tool the best and you're going to have the least amount of questions. Um, and you can, can kind of control the process and the deliverable to the client. So we, we produce a 29 page valuation report and, you know, you sort of control the speed of how all of the information is delivered. Second most popular way would be you would actually send this smart link out to a business owner and have them generate all of the figures. You would go over it with them after. Um, as, you, as you can imagine, that's easy because you don't have to have any meetings. Um, but, you know, there, there, there can be some hiccups in that process um, as far as a business owner going through the tool for the first time may have some trouble. So it's something to be aware of. And the third most popular way is you as the user or advisor in the field would actually meet with the client um, and do this together. Um, that has its you know, advantages as, you know, especially if it's a prospect, it's a good way to get to know, know the business owner. Um, and you sort of still control the speed of the output, uh, but you're, you have the business owner in there with you. So let's go through this as if we were a business owner being sent a link, since that's sort of the most complicated of the three. So... Can I ask for the business name? Ask for the zip code. I'm going to type in my zip code in Bryn Mawr. Now, industry is going to be very important. So anybody that is familiar with business valuation will know that, um, you know, not all businesses are valued the same. Um, depending on the industry is depending on what type of multiples you would use to actually value the business. So let's say in this case, we're asking for an NAICS code. So we've made it a keyword searchable database. I typed in restaurant. That's going to pre-fill code 272252, I mean 72251. Um, and again, it's keyword searchable. So if you were doing, I think we used plumbing, heating, and air contractor before, just type that in. So let's do restaurant. And we'll move on here to step two, um, which is probably the easiest in the entire process. This is just collecting the business owner's information. So name. 
address, email, uh, business address. Now, the most important thing on this is going to be selecting which type of business structure the corporation has. Now, unlike that, NICUS code, most business owners are going to know their structure. So this isn't a question that usually hangs anybody up. Um, and let's say they're an S corp. The reason we're asking what their structure is, is because we'd like to know which tax form they use. And I'm going to show you why that's important on the next page. Um, last thing about step two is please select your reason for running evaluation. This isn't going to change how the valuation is done. This is just more for the fact that you know some of our users promote their smart link uh, via LinkedIn, their website. So this is just helping them collect additional data on prospects or people they don't know much about. So it's just giving them more insight as to why they're actually running evaluation. I'm going to hit next. We're going to move on to step three. Now, the reason we selected that tax form is anything that can come off of the corporate tax return, we're going to give you this form icon here and tell you which line on the tax return to get that, get the item off of. Now, that makes the data entry process a lot easier. One, because if the business owner is actually utilizing the smart link and filling this out themselves, um, they're probably not going to be super savvy with their financial form. So it really makes the data entry process a lot smoother. Um, and two, if you're the user typing everything in, you're not going to be flipping through, you know, flipping between tax returns and uh, and balance sheets as much if you know which I, which line to get the item from. Everything else has a IntelliTip on it, so we're going to define exactly what we're looking for. Um, if you just highlight over the question mark, now we do ask for three years of tax, uh, three years of financial information. We think we're the most accurate if we have at least three. I'm only going to type information in one just for the demo purposes. Um, and once you have revenue and pre-tax income in, uh, that's when the estimated value starts to calculate. You'll kind of see one of the more fun parts of the software. Once you type in revenue or pre-tax income, you're going to see that number climb. And, you know, that's for the clients. This is what, uh, you know, gets them to continue to enter in data. Um, it's what gets them to, you know, obviously, one, you want to put in accurate data, but it, it really promotes that curiosity and helps them continue entering data in the tool. So I'm going to type, let me just adjust the officer comp here, make that a little more realistic. I'm going to move on to step four of seven, which is all around the assets. As you see, we have form icons there, so everything off here is coming off a corporate tax return. Sort of arbitrarily typing in numbers here. Now, Two features that are available on every single page in the process are a save for later button. Think of this button as business owner gets here to step four. You know, they realize something came up. Maybe they're, they're running a little behind. They want to email themselves a link and they want to start where they left off. So instead of starting a completely new valuation, this email, this would email them a link and allow them to come in and finish and enter data. Now, the link is only good for seven days. Um, if the link expires, you're not going to lose any data that's already input in the system. It's just uh, really to promote the urgency for the business owner to get it finished. Um, the more used button is going to be the delegate button. So think about this as it's just like the save for later button, except for this is the way the business owner can send out a link to someone else. So maybe their accountant has all of their financial information. Uh, you know, Maybe they have a full-time CFO that actually fills out the data. Again, it's good for seven days, um, just allows the person to come in and enter data. We're going to move on here to step five, liabilities. Uh, most of these are going to come off a balance sheet. As you can see, we only have one form icon here. And again, just kind of blindly typing in numbers here. As you see, adjusted the, uh, the valuation you know, to go along with some of, the, uh, some of the liabilities the company's holding. So I'm going to move on to step five, uh, sorry, six of seven. This is where it gets a little bit more subjective, and this is where that situation where I said if the business owner is sort of sitting in there with you, um, it kind of makes the uh, makes the process a little bit smoother just because, like I said, the questions are a little more subjective. So projected revenue growth. Now, one thing about the revenue growth is you're not going to see it affect the valuation too much. Now, if I throw it up to 100, we're going to see that number climb. Um, but since it is projected, um, it's really only a, uh, you know, like I said, it's not going to drive up the valuation too much. The long-term EBITDA margin is going to have a little bit more of an effect. So let's keep these both at 7%. Percentage of business reoccurring. We did a restaurant, so to be successful, they'll probably have to be in the 70s. Um, do you have any intellectual property, including trade secrets or patents? One, uh, if it is, yes. We do ask for that to be in the intangible assets. Um, I would imagine, though, most restaurants in the western suburbs of Philadelphia do not have IP, so I'm going to hit no. Now I'm going to move on to step seven of seven. 
What percentage of sales comes from your top three customers? Ten. The owner of the business left. How would your profits and revenues be impacted? Put fall substantially. We'll watch that drop a little bit. Does your current life or key person insurance coverage and risk management program cover the business valuation quotation above? Um, more than likely, um, it's not. Most businesses are underinsured. Uh, I'm not sure you guys are using this tool too much with insurance. We won't spend too much time on that. Now, I want to show you one nuance if they own their own real estate. Let's say this business owner owns the real estate. Market value is 850000 Remaining mortgage, 100000 Square footage, 3500 If they own it through the business entity, you just click, obviously, this property is owned through the business entity. Fair market rent, 5000 And we'll watch this figure adjust a little bit. So we're going to have your estimated business value and your estimated business value, including the real estate. That's only if the business entity itself owns the real estate. More often than not, if the real estate's owned by the business owner, it's going to be owned through a holding company, a real estate company, or some separate entity. So in that case, we're going to put the property is owned by a second entity with common ownership. I'm going to ask this if the regular monthly rent would be. Now we'll watch the value jump back up a little bit. But we're not going to give you that including the real estate since we're only valuing the real estate. Uh, I mean, we're only valuing the business entity right now. So since I use the smart link, I'm going to click, click save and continue. And this is what a client would see or a business owner would see if they were sent out the link. They would get, thank you for using a Brinker Capital Business Valuation Service. They would also receive this confirmation in an email. Now, more importantly, Matt is going to receive an email that there is a company run on his smart link just to notify him that someone filled the valuation out. Let me go to the company console. We're going to see a second test company pop up, the one we just ran today. So now I'm logged back in as Matt. So again, home, start of the seven-step process, company consoles, any companies you run, as well as the smart link. Give this a moment to load up, and we'll look at the actual output. So we'll click on test, and this is you know, what you as the user have access to inside your console, and then we'll go over what the client-facing item is. So we have where the business is ranked. So in its NICUS code, it's the 34, 34,000th most valuable restaurant in the U.S. Green means is where it ranks within its NAICS code locally. So it's the third most valuable restaurant within its zip code in that NICUS code. So there's 71. So let's scroll down. This is a review of step two. Um, if you need to edit the information, obviously very easy to do. Um, now, key performance indicators. This is where we can get into some of the help and some of the, uh, the performance you can provide for the business owner. So everything in here um, is defined. So, you know, we don't expect you at Brinker um, or any of your, your users in the field to be business valuation experts. So everything here we have the definition of. So not only can you let a business owner know how their business is performing um, with these key performance indicators, you can also sort of speak to these terms. So all 12 of these terms have definitions. If it's green, it means it's outperforming its industry average. Purple means it's underperforming its industry average. We'll keep scrolling here. Here's a review of the financials. Um, reason behind this is, you know, once the 2017 financials are official, you can just come in here and just type just the financials in to update the valuation. You can go as far back as 2014. You can adjust the sliders here as necessary. But now we're going to look at the valuation report. So I'm going to hit generate new valuation report. Keep in mind, if you're ever going to update these figures, make sure you generate a new PDF. Um, so the PDF, so this is only going to show what the figures are now. If I was to come in and, you know, maybe change this, maybe we got it wrong. It was 3.5 million and 760,000. Just so we see a change in it. Now I'll hit generate new valuation report. This is going to show the updated figures. So this is what the deliverable to the client is. The business owner would sort of receive this um, about their business valuation. So it's basically everything that's in the console just laid out a little bit differently. Um, it's going to have the Brinker logo on the front, presented by, since I was logged in as Matt, it'll say presented by Matt. Whoever you're logged in as, it's going to say presented by them. First few pages are all about business valuation in general, um, our methodology and some key terms. Page six is where it's specific to the business owner. So we have their equity value. And just like the uh, KPIs, we don't expect you at Brinker to be the, uh, the business valuation experts. So we have the equity value definition. 
asset sale enterprise liquidation. Um, usually it's not negative, it's just based on the kind of goofy figures I put in here. So we're going to give the business owner the four values of their business um, and sort of explain when you know when you would use each one or which one uh, which situation each applies to. A review of the financials right here. Uh, side by side views. So we only typed in data in 2016. So now we have data, uh, you know, 15 to 14 would say NA. Key performance indicators get sort of a, a different look on the client facing report. So obviously there's nothing they can click on as this is something that's printable. So we give them these real world applications. So return on equity. What does it mean? Why should it matter? Give me an example. So for all 12, they're defined on here. So the report itself lays out pretty nicely. Um, that's sort of been our, our, our bread and butter with feedback. Um, business owners really like seeing something, you know, that one, can be generated fairly quickly and inexpensively, and two, it, it lays out nicely and really shows them a, a 360 view of their business value. And, um, it's obviously very detailed and very, uh, very user-friendly with the look. Um, so we went over this with the smart link. So I know, um, you know, Matt and, and Brendan will probably be able to provide a little bit more specifics of how this is going to be used. I know, you know, different groups are going to utilize this a little bit differently. Um, so some of you may be use, utilizing the smart link. Some of you may actually be running this on your own. So again, when you log in, brinker.bizequity.com, just hitting home, this is where you would start your own valuation um, and it'll appear in your console. Um, obviously, smart link, we just went through. So that's what the business owner would fill out. Um, and again, make sure you use the smart link. The second piece of the call today is going to be the search for prospects feature. Um, so the first thing to know about this is this Google map. So it's going to be, you can manipulate it um, same way you could with a map on Google. So the tool itself, you know, we used Philadelphia last week or two weeks ago as the example, choose Boston this week. So within Boston, so this is also going to include the suburbs that are showing on the map. There are 133,000 businesses in our database. Um, so for business owners, it's, uh, I mean, for, for those using a tool, kind of a, a bear of a number to deal with. So the first thing I always tell people to sort of, you know, people that are successful with the tool are the ones that take a surgical approach to it. So I'm going to type in dentists as far as industry goes. So now we have 2,000 dentists within this map of Boston. Let's decide we're not going to worry about the suburbs. We're just going to worry about the city of Boston. So once I zoomed it in, now there's 633. Another way to sort of trim this list is to trim it by the value. So let's say we only want to look at businesses we have pre-valued at over 500,000. Now we've trimmed the list to 99, and it's a little bit more of a uh, easier list to look at. So let's take a look at Family Dentist of New England. Sorry, bad example. Let's do orthodontist ink so i'm going to tell you what these you know these items right here mean so we give every business in our system has a valuation estimate and again i need to you know harp home that that is a, just an estimate is what it is so for our our algorithm what we do is we take publicly available data we run it through our system for every business here now unfortunately most private companies don't have revenue or pre-tax income publicly available which are two of the most important things to valuing a business so we're using other data to estimate what we think a business is worth now we're going to tell you how accurate we think this number is based on this icon right here so if you see a telescope like we have right here um, it means our valuation estimate is 35 percent or less probability of accuracy what that means is it means we're missing a lot of key data to actually value the business you see the binoculars like we have for this one. Um, you're going to see, you know, that means 55% or better. It means we have a decent amount of data, um, but again, it's still sort of a guess. If you see the microscope, which is going to be pretty rare, means we probably have a lot of, it means we have a decent amount of data on that company and, and our number is more than likely accurate. Now, what would be more important to me if I was prospecting with this tool and sort of what, you know, what most of our, most of our users are going to use here is going to be what the letter grade represents. And what that means is that's how confident we are in the contact detail, um, so which is sort of why the, why the tools used. So for here, um, this right here. So we have the key contact is, I can't say that name, so we'll skip it. Let's do Boston Dental. Um, Elias Basha, the manager, telephone number, email address right here, the address of the business, number of employees, year established, et cetera. 
So when I tell people to, st- to start with the tool, you know, when I when we trim by valuation, I only do that really for a way to get the list lower. Like I said, the valuation numbers are just estimates. So I wouldn't necessarily ignore business just because our system says it's worth $200,000. Um, I would really start with the, the higher quality contact details when prospecting. Now, I know more of that's going to be used for the users in the field rather than the Brinker home office employees. Um, and that's just one, something that I wanted since we recorded the call to have uh, to have recorded. Third thing we'll show you today, and then we'll do any questions, is the success center. So in our success center, I'm not going to take you through every piece, but what we have here is sort of a library of um, collateral that can be used to help leverage biz equity for advisors in the field sort of promoting, promoting running valuation. So one thing, um, one of our more popular items here – is the PowerPoint presentation. So we've created a PowerPoint all around why a business owner would need to know what their valuation is. Uh, focus of it is, you know, most people think they only need to know their business valuation when they're getting ready to sell their business. You know, this sort of breaks that myth and explains that you would need to know it um, to properly plan for retirement. You would need to know your business value to make sure you're properly insured. Everything, everything in the success center, we leave room at the end or the bottom. So they can be personalized to whoever the user is. So think about one of your users in the field could put their, you know, if they have a DBA name, their DBA DBA name there or their name and logo. So everything is customizable and and really able, you're able to use it um, in all purposes in the field. We have a call script. So this is for um, some of our larger clients use this if they have summer interns or, you know, more junior associates making cold calls around business valuation. These would be the scripts to use. Email example, same thing. So if someone wants to run an email campaign and use business valuation as the focus, this is uh, this would be the place to start with the emails. Marketing slicks. This is my favorite right here is top 10 reasons for business valuation. This is probably the most utilized um, feature in the success center. It's 10 reasons why someone would need to run a business valuation. Space down here at the bottom to, again, personalize it to whoever's sending it out. Client-facing materials. So we have the entire process in a PDF. This is if you know you have a client that's a little more old school; they'd rather go pen to paper. So this is where they can actually run the value or type in the fill out. Sorry, the um, info for the valuation, and then you, you as the user or whoever collected the data, would be able to run it in the uh, in the system. We have the business valuation checklist. So pre a meeting, this is everything that you need to run a valuation. Now, this is a little bit overkill, um, generally three years of federal tax returns plus current uh, financial statements are all you really need to, to fill out the value. Like you're speaking through it, you're I'm sorry, I missed that. No, I think we were losing you a little bit there. You're breaking up. I think it was either connection on yours or our end, but uh, I think we got you back. Okay, great. Uh, we have blog posts, so a lot of our users are always looking for content to repurpose on LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter. This is where they can come and grab some stuff. Sample reports are great. Um, If you have a business owner that is, if you have a business owner that's kind of on the fence, they'd like to know exactly what you'd be able to produce for them. These are just sample valuations for fictitious businesses. You can kind of show them exactly what you could provide to them um, if they were to provide their financials for you. Um, Next thing we'll look at are the user guides here. Um, This is basically everything we went over today. Everything that we went over today. um, Success Center playbook, all of the onboarding process in a user, uh, in in YouTube links. And the last thing I'll show you is the support center. So some of our users, instead of asking us questions, um, sometimes prefer to find the answer on their own. So this is a keyword searchable database. The support center is always going to be on the right in the success center. Um, so you can always see the button right over here. And it's basically, like I said, keyword searchable database. Um, just for if you have any quick questions that you think are kind of a frequently asked questions, um, this would be where you would start with that. So quick review before we do any questions. Home, when you log in to brinker.bizequity.com, any, uh, any businesses you're going to value with by yourself um, or you're going to be the one who inputs the data would be run here. Clicking your name, company, console is where you get that smart link. So if you need to send a link to a business owner to tie it to your console. And well, as any businesses you value, it will be here in a list. 
search for prospects is the prospecting map. Success Center is that, uh, you know, sort of everything else, the um, the marketing playbook and, and all the collateral that we've created. And I'm sure we have questions now, so let's go ahead and get those answered. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Thank you for the walkthrough. Um, anyone have any questions for Brian while we're in the room? This might be a question more for Matt, Brian, but um, I was wondering what kind of conversations have occurred internally here as far as making this available to advisors, or is this something that we would have on our desktops and then we would use? It's going to be both. So we're having conversations internally now to roll it out to maybe five, possibly 10 advisors of you know, heavy business, uh, business owner clientele. Mm -hmm. um, we're still in the process of doing that, but we're, we plan on getting all of you uh, a license so you can log in and see what uh, Brian's been showing you. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously you, you and Todd may use it differently than the strategists, the portfolio managers, um, but we want everyone to have access to it. With the age? That's something we haven't discussed yet, but possibly. Um, if it makes sense, we, we have the licenses, so whoever Whoever wants it in their hands really can can get it. Okay, thanks. Yep. Do you update your software with um, on a regular basis? I guess on an annual basis with updated tax laws. So and great, great laws question. So we we probably add feature wise. I would say we add five to eight features a year. Um, tax laws aren't really going to come into play for our for our software as much. Um, I'm, I'm sure if there's a major tax law that's going to be changed, we'll, we'll definitely up, update it because we have valuation specialists on hand. But since we're really just asking for information from the tax return, um, I don't think a change in a tax law. It might change, obviously, for the business owner what the numbers are going to look like. But for valuation purposes, unless there's a change in the industry or change in you know, um, approved practices, uh, tax law shouldn't affect our, uh, our, our data too much. Um, as, as to how we take it. Hey, Brian, how do you wait, or what weighting do you give to comparables, and what weighting do you give to the input from the tax return? Great question. So it's going to depend on the industry, um, and I'm going to just show you a quick look under the hood just to show you how, how in-depth it goes. So let's just type in, and this is something we, we – it's part of our patented algorithm, so we're, we're not like there's only certain scenarios where we'll talk about it. But let's just click on, um, let's find a U.S. industry in here, and we did restaurant. So it's really going to depend on the industry. So we did restaurants. So if it's a small revenue here, some of the some of the different um, different multiples that we'll use if you know if it's a medium size we're going to do these multiples so it, it's going to depend on the nicus code and that's why getting the nicus code correct is so important to make sure that we're using the proper multiples for that given industry um so it's going to change on a case-by-case -case basis and also the size of the business will matter so you know as you saw on, on that last screen we had the the small medium large so it's going to depend on you know where that business falls in its industry although there's there's no way to determine what those weightings are, right? By um, on the website. No, so that's not something we make public as, as it's part of our patented algorithm, and it's kind of the you know the the reason that our our software is actually accurate. We can't make that public for uh, for certain reasons. Now, if let's say there's a scenario where you go into uh, you know there's the business owner really needs to know what multiple use we're you know, one-off scenarios, we can kind of go into what it is and why we did it that way. Um, but just as a whole, it's not something we can provide for, for every valuation at every company. Okay. What is this? What is this how do you roll out for us? Uh, I mean, it's already, we already have the licenses, so I mean, you can have it today. We just haven't gotten you guys uh, set up with it. I, I think I'm the only one. Maybe Tom might have also logged into his, but um, so far we we just have to get get you guys the email set up and everything. But it's ready to go. I'm good. Right. Any other questions now? Um, Brian, do you have any idea how or any um, you know any 
ideas on how close the valuations are to what might actually be the outcome in a, in a fair, you know, as, as far as a fair value exchange? Great question. So uh, about 16 or 15 or 16 months ago, KPMG in the UK ran a hundred of our valuations up against a hundred of their certified valuations. I think we lost audio on you a little bit. Um, Is it back? Are you there? How about, can you hear me now? Hello? Can you hear me now? Looks like we, uh, uh, yep. Okay, so about 15 months ago, KPMG in the UK ran 100 of our valuations up against 100 of their uh, certified valuations. We came within 2%. So as far as accuracy goes, we're generally within 5 to 8% of certified valuations. Um, marketplace transactions are obviously going to be a little bit of a different animal because um, it's going to depend on the area of the business and a few other aspects. So we we try to, uh, you know, get be as you know our 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 algorithm tries to be as close to certified valuations as much as possible but you know sort of just like real estate transactions you know if it's generally accepted um that's usually what it's going to go for but there's obviously going to be other factors in, in market transactions that are going to affect what businesses actually sell for um so our tool is, is better for planning purposes retirement purposes um but obviously there are going to be times when a business is either going to sell for you know could sell for a lot less or a lot more just depending on the uh the current climate in that area in that industry. Got you. Thanks. Anyone else? Anything else? Good. All right. Well, thanks again, Brian. We appreciate the walkthrough. Yeah. Um, I'm going to mark everybody that we have. You said you did record this, so I'm assuming that'll be sent out, and we can uh, we can distribute that around as well. Yes. Thanks, Brian. Copy the recording today. Great. Thanks a lot, Brian. Have a good one. Thanks for the call. Have a great day. All right, you too. Bye.